This so happens to be the front entrance of the Hall House Go House, which is located in the town of Ipswich, Massachusetts. This video was created by Edison Forbes, and I hope you enjoy. As you can see, I included all the other side angles of the Hall House Go House. Although you probably have not noticed, the windows that are on the building are different from the windows in the 1800s. These windows are recognized as Indian shutters that were able to be shut from the inside when a storm was coming, so the people did not have to go outside. Although these photos do not seem like much, these were the old excavations of a building that was built on the same property of the Hall Haskell House. This building was part of a mercantile store that sold a variety of objects like food, hay, tea, clothing, jewelry, beauty products, and housewares. As most of you may know, in the 1800s there were not any laws or a limited amount, so littering did not exist. Most of all rubbish and belongings that were not needed or wanted were put in, in a river or ocean nearby. Ipswich was a prime suspect for littering in the ocean and river because both were near and easy to get access to. However, the Ipswich River was located right across the street from the Hall Haskell House and therefore the river got really dirtied and carried lots of diseases. Many artworks that I had noticed in the Hall Haskell House caught my eye because of the imagination as well as creativity that had gone into them. The first picture that I am interested in by was the old picture of the Hall Haskell House. This picture included a variety of similar colors that were mixed and laid out to make a nice painting. Although, another picture that so happens to be my favorite includes lots of land and sea animals jumbled together to put a great diversity on the painting. As well as seeing the other two pieces of artworks, this is a short video of the other famous paintings that I recognized while I was visiting the Hall Haskell House. The lady, to my right, is describing all the fantastic paintings during the time, and these paintings were lucky enough to be in the Hall Haskell House. The Hall Haskell House had a variety of purposes during the 1700s to the 1800s. Although I already told you that it had been a mercantile store, it was a house for as many families as eight. However, some people before the house was even created bought the land and used it for business purposes. Firstly, a man named Thomas Wells granted an acre and a half in 1635. Next, a man by the name of Thomas Perrins purchased the lot in 1691 after Mr. Wells decided to sell the property. In addition, a man named Henry Wise bought the house on April 10, 1733. Sadly, Henry Wise was forced to mortgage the house to a young lady named Widow Mary Store on October 3rd, 1765. Unfortunately, Widow Mary Store did not live long and had died soon only to give the house to Charles and Mary Hall. No sooner in 1825, the house was sold to Deacon Mark and Eunice Haskell. The name of the Hall Haskell House was named after the Hall and the Hall and the Haskell family. Furthermore, on February 17, 1843, a man named Abraham Coldwell was given control of the house. Finally, a young man named John Hurd purchased the house in 1864. Ipswich in the 1800s was a very well-known city because of its attributes. Ipswich was located right on the ocean and had lots of water and ways for people to make money. For example, seafood and many other water-related products were in great need during the time. Also, Ipswich was a very important town because it was a place for lots of sailors and people who loved the ocean to go with their ships and sailboats. Harbors were also very important during the time and always had lots of goods and things going on which attracted many people. Due to this, the Hall Haskell House became a very popular place for social and economical gains because it was located right dead in the dead center of town. Ipswich was given the name Birthplace of American Independence when it was settled in 1633. Finally, Ipswich is the home of the first lace-making town in America 
and has the most first community homes in Ipswich than any other community in the country.